Hello, I'm Roger Sessions. I'm going to be talking to you about the snowman architecture, a more effective approach to building large complex IT systems. Let me introduce myself. I've been involved in the field of IT complexity analytics for a number of years. IT complexity analytics is the study of the pathology of IT related complexity. I've taught a graduate course in this topic at the University of the Andes, and I've given keynote talks at two different Gartner Research Boards. I've written seven books and many influential white papers, and I'm grateful to the International Association of Software Architects, who has recognized me as an ISA Fellow for my innovative work in this area. Here is an outline of this presentation. My goal is to give you an overview of the snowman architecture and contrast this approach to IT to the more traditional approach to IT that I've called the SOA web architecture. I'll compare these two approaches and four key system attributes. Then I'll show how the snowman architecture fits into a full life cycle vision for IT development. Then I'll suggest some next steps that you might consider if you find that you resonate with the ideas I have presented. And for those of you who like to understand more of the theory behind the practice, I'll recommend some more in-depth study resources. Before we look at the snowman architecture, let's look at the standard architectural approach to large IT systems. We start by understanding the business architecture we need to support. This means identifying the business functions and understanding the interrelationships between the functions. Next, we design a technical architecture. Typically, this is an interrelated web of services. Architecturally, our goal is to ensure that all of the requirements identified in the business analysis are delivered by some collection of services. Once we understand the technical architecture, we can map this to the data architecture. Our goal here is to understand which services update which data on which data stores. The end result of this is what I am calling an SOA web architecture. I call it SOA because typically the technical architecture is defined as an SOA. I call it a web architecture, not because this architecture runs on the web, it may or it may not, but because the most appropriate visual metaphor for the architecture is a spider's web with lots of connection points between the various nodes of the web. Notice that some rather fuzzy horizontal boundaries separate the three architectural levels. The snowman architecture starts out looking like the SOA web architecture in that we begin the design by identifying the business functions. But very quickly the snowman architecture diverges from the SOA web architecture. Once we identify the business functions, we partition them into synergy groups, that is groups which have closely related business functionality. Once we have found the synergy groups, we identify the dependencies between synergy groups. This is different than the dependencies identified for the SOA web architecture. In the SOA web architecture, we need to know all of the dependencies between all of the business functions. Collecting this information is a daunting task that often results in incorrect data being collected that causes lots of problems in the technical architecture. In the snowman architecture, we need only document those dependencies that cross synergy groups. Because of the tight relationship between functions within a synergy group, there are relatively few dependencies that cross synergy groups. Since there are relatively few cross-group dependencies, there is relatively little data to collect, and the data we do collect is much more likely to be accurate. Each synergy group in the business architecture has a corresponding service in the technical architecture. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the synergy groups in the business architecture and the services in the technical architecture. At this point, we need not worry about how these services will be implemented. Our main concern 
is understanding which synergy groups correspond to which services. Each of the services in the technical architecture is given portals through which asynchronous messages can be sent or received. We now identify specific asynchronous messages that will connect the technical services. Each message definition will correspond to one of the intergroup dependencies identified in the business architecture. Finally, we identify the data architecture that will support the technical services. The important point about the data level is that our data is partitioned such that any given data element is owned by one and only one of the technical services. We now have a complete snowman architecture. We have our business functions partitioned by synergy. This makes up the head of the snowman. We have services which correspond one to one with our synergy groups. This is the torso of the snowman. And we have data partitioning that is reflective of the service partitioning above it. This is the bottom of the snowman. Why do we call this a snowman architecture? Well, it's probably obvious, but it doesn't take too long staring at one of these architectural diagrams before you start seeing the whole thing as groups of snowmen. Snowmen work together through asynchronous messages to coordinate some type of business activity. Consider a pharmaceutical company that is running phase three trials. They might have one snowman that manages patient information. Another snowman might be responsible for managing a particular site, say one of the study groups that is part of the trial. And another snowman might be responsible for managing information about the trial as a whole. This is just an example. The actual snowman will be determined by the synergy analysis of the functions in the business architecture. You can see that we have two very different approaches to creating an IT architecture. The first, the traditional approach to large system design, is the SOA web architecture. The second, the approach I am suggesting, is the snowman architecture. So which is best? The only way we can answer this question is to see how these two approaches compare on the key attributes I mentioned earlier. These attributes are failure rates, adaptability, reliability, and security. If one of these two architectural approaches consistently delivers better on these attributes, or whatever attributes you've identified as being critical for your organization, then I suggest that you consider adopting that particular approach. Let's start with seeing how the two approaches do on the critical issue of failure. A project is said to have failed when it goes over budget, is delivered too late, or doesn't meet the needs of the business. I think it's pretty clear that failure is something we want to avoid. So if one approach is less likely to fail, that is something certainly worth considering. A number of studies have been done on the relationship between IT project size and the chances that the project will fail. If you're interested in reading more about this, I've written a number of papers on this subject, and they're all on my website. But the bottom line is pretty simple. Small projects succeed, large projects fail. The two cutoffs are about $1 million and $10 million, respectively. One of the advantages of the snowman architecture is that our analysis leads us to a number of relatively small snowmen each of which can be attacked as an independent project. In effect, this means that none of our projects exceeds the magic number of $1 million. The SOA web architecture is quite different. Because of the tight web of connections that bind every function in the project to almost every other function, it is difficult to break up the large project into smaller projects. This means that if the project as a whole exceeds $10 million, it's not going to be easy to break it up, and you're very likely to have major problems. Keep it small and keep it simple. That's the mantra of the snowman architecture. The second attribute is adaptability. This refers to the ease with which a system can be adapted 
to meet the changing needs of the business. The SOA web architecture doesn't do well with adaptability. That same tight web of connections that makes the project difficult to split up now serves to drag the project back whenever changes are attempted. Changing a single business function requires changes to a number of technical functions, which are themselves dragged back by other functions and all of which are anchored by the unyielding data. The snowman architecture behaves quite differently in the face of change. Because we have business functions grouped together synergistically, it is highly likely that all changes to support a given business change are co-located in the same snowman head. And since the contents of the head determine the contents of the torso, that is the technical architecture, the changes needed in the technical architecture are guaranteed to not extend beyond the torso of one snowman. And since the data is not shared across snowmen, there is no chance that changes to this snowman will impact data used by other snowmen. The result of all this is that in the worst case, a business change requires a completely new snowman implementation, but that's the worst possible case. And since this is a relatively small piece of the overall pie, this is quite manageable. The third attribute is reliability. A number of issues come under the general umbrella of reliability, including the length of time between system failures, the duration of system failures, and the magnitude of system failures. From our perspective, they are all influenced by the same factors. This is another area in which the tightly coupled nature of the SOA web architecture causes numerous problems. The tight connections cause failure cascades, so a failure in one system propagates out to other systems and from there to yet more systems and before long the entire system is down. The snowman architecture is protected from failures in several ways. First, the strong vertical partitions act as failure walls, meaning that a failure in one piece of the technology or data architecture may bring down the remaining pieces of that particular snowman, but the failure is unlikely to go beyond the boundaries of that snowman. Second, the fact that snowmen are connected together using asynchronous messages means that short-term snowman failures lasting for a minute or two will probably not even be noticed. The messages will simply be queued up in the reliable messaging infrastructure. And when the snowman returns to life, the messages will be waiting. Third, the snowman architecture can easily be made redundant. Each snowman can have a shadow, and if the snowman goes down, its shadow takes over. The asynchronous messaging infrastructure makes this easily implemented. The last attribute I'll look at is security. This refers to how easy it is to protect the system from unauthorized usage or manipulation, especially at the data level. One of the problems we run into with security is configuring the database so that the technical services can get to the data they need. In the SOA web architecture, this configuration is very difficult. The net result ends up being that virtually every message becomes a point of vulnerability. The Snowman architecture has a much easier database configuration model. We simply configure the data level, the bottom of the snowman, to give access to any processes living in the torso, and to deny all access to anybody else. Then we protect the incoming portals and we're done. We have a highly secure architecture with the least possible number of vulnerabilities. As you can see, when we compare the typical SOA web architecture to the snowman architecture, there are a number of compelling benefits to the snowman architecture. The snowman architecture has lower failure rates, greater flexibility, more reliability, and better security. The bigger the system we're trying to build, the greater these benefits will be. The snowman architecture is one part of the overall snowman picture. We don't have time to talk about the entire practice, but let me just hit some highlights. The snowman practice is guided by the snowman philosophy, 
which is that for large IT systems, certainly any IT system in excess of $10 million, the best possible architecture is the simplest possible snowman architecture. The snowman architecture is the strong vertically partitioned architecture model that I've been discussing. This model starts with understanding the business functions that will make up the head of the snowman. The snowman metric is a mathematical equation that can be used to measure the effectiveness of a proposed snowman architecture. This allows us to compare two proposals and determine in a rational manner which of the two is a better proposal. While the snowman metric allows us to compare two proposals, it doesn't guarantee that either of these proposals is the best possible proposal. This is where the snowman methodology comes in. This is a directed, reproducible, and testable methodology that guides us through the process of designing a snowman architecture and leads us directly to the best possible architecture. Finally, the Snowman tool is a software tool that is produced by one of our partners, Enterprise Web. This tool gives us an automated approach to driving the Snowman metrics, guiding the Snowman methodology, and managing the data that determines the best possible Snowman architecture. So how would you go about transitioning your enterprise to the Snowman architecture? My best advice is to do it slowly. There are a number of important changes you will need to make, and it is important that everybody involved in the architecture, which includes both the business and the IT groups, be deeply committed to its success. The starting point is to get an overview of the architecture, how the architecture fits into the practice, and understand the problems that this is trying to solve. And you've finished this. So what do you think? Do your large systems have high failure rates? security problems, reliability issues? Are they as easy to adapt as you would like? If you're happy with the way you're currently doing things, then that's great, and we have nothing to offer. On the other hand, if these problems resonate, and if you see the potential in this approach, then the next step might be to bring us in for a one-day workshop in-house. This will give you a much closer look at the snowman practice including a thorough review of the mathematical underpinnings. Now you'll be in a much better position to evaluate this approach. If after the one-day workshop you still see the potential here, then we should try the snowman approach on a pilot project. Ideally, this project should be at least several million dollars so that we can measure the benefits this approach provides. Did you see the benefits? If so, then don't stop here. Let's plan a major rollout. But this is getting ahead of ourselves. The next question you should ask is, do you feel a resonance? And if so, let's talk. For those of you who would like to get into this subject in depth, I have lots of papers, both theoretical and practical, on the Object Watch website and my blog. Check both of those out. In particular, you might want to look at the white paper, The Mathematics of IT Simplification. This paper has attracted a lot of attention. Before I sign off, I need to include a slide of thanks to my cast and all of the people who have made photos of snowmen available through the Creative Commons process. Thank you. And that is the end of this presentation. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you found some of these ideas interesting. Now, let's go build some snowmen.